All right, guys, Central Grid here again today. Been a long day, but we are going to be talking about a few things. A couple of big announcements come out over the last day or so. One of them, a rumor from Crone CDL Intel related to the Toronto team. And just about, well, half an hour ago from when I'm recording this video, Clayster confirmed onto the Dallas roster. We're going to talk about that in a second, of course, talking about the rumor that's going to be surrounding Clayster on that team. We're going to have a look at the announcement as well. Very good announcement video on the whole. That's probably the most exciting thing about these Dallas announcements. We're pretty sure what the players are going to be but what order are they going to be announced in what exactly is their team name going to be called but they announced that on Saturday as is planned so if you guys aren't aware they're doing a player announcement for Dallas every single day this week they've started with Clayster today on the Monday they will finish on Friday with a lot of people are going to guess Crim6 but we'll have to see how that turns out over the coming days so like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you are new as always we'll talk a little bit about the roster today but obviously i want to save that from where we get more announcements on the team few things to discuss before we get to that then so parasites tweet we discussed briefly yesterday we ran replies with path to pro life it is um you know this is yesterday now so just to run through a few things that you guys have been adding me in on twitter and thanks a lot for that um just another thing related to we man so my cod career is looking much brighter these days now not necessarily does that mean that things have changed between yesterday and when he made this tweet which was like kind of also yesterday so I doubt anything came through the post in those few hours between these two tweets but you never know it could have done um, another thing that Minnesota wraps me in here related to Emery's who are the best free agents in the P2P which is path to pro hit my line so pretty much confirming that Emery's is going to be finding his way through that avenue Defrag as well, free agent for the path to pro, had two second place and finishes in the top 12 at champ. So it's getting to the point where we see these tweets. It basically means that a lot of players have been signed onto franchise teams, of course, at this point, and therefore the ones that haven't been signed and pretty much everyone's roster is kind of full at this point. Maybe a couple of substitutes yet to be confirmed. Um, of course, we don't know a lot about substitutes more generally, but I'm guessing they are being signed behind the scenes and that's why a lot of these players are being like, well, you know, my, my chances are kind of over for the CDL outside of the Path to Pro system, which of course is what a lot of them will be going for. I thought this is pretty cool. Beats by Nav. I hadn't, I wasn't aware of this guy, but he has almost 600,000 followers on Twitter, so pretty big individual, and he is uh, he's involved in this COD Toronto launch party. So, uh, so yeah, here we go, 24th of October, the day before Call of Duty Modern Warfare releases. They're doing a launch party to reveal their roster, and I thought I'd mention this because in just a couple of minutes' time, we're going to be looking at what their roster could be. Kind of a super roster in that they have effectively filled out all the spots, as we know, Five players is not enough this season. You have to have at least seven, two substitutes, five main players, but you can have up to ten, and it seems like they have maxed it out completely. Um, yeah, thanks to Sloss City GG for adding me, and dear CDL organizations plus watch next from Ferro. If you guys are aware of Ferro, you may be aware of a clip that circulated on Reddit um, probably a year or two ago at this point, from back in the Black Ops 3 days, where he said a remark that he definitely shouldn't have said. Um, I'm all for kind of giving second chances. I don't want to get too too deep onto this topic but of course this is what he says on the matter I'd like to start this off by saying no means I, I feel like I do everything that's happening to me is unjustified or not understandable please don't take what I say and twist it um, so yeah this is this is his statement of course he's had such a bright start to his career on that team caliber team last season one stage two playoffs didn't get MVP at that event but was probably MVP for the playoffs in my money people I think kind of underrate how good he was at that event with the sniper in hand um, all around I think Farrow was Team Keller's best player when they won that event start of the Black Ops 4 season he gets picked up onto 100 Thieves I was personally of the opinion that was a pretty damn good pickup at the time didn't work out in terms of the team chemistry there, there's clearly um, some maturity issues I think on Farrow and you can kind of see a little bit of that coming through probably in this uh, in this tweet here in this tweet longer um and yeah, look, he, he's done tweets like this maybe a couple of months ago and clearly things haven't worked out for him in terms of getting a sub spot. Maybe people just don't really like his attitude or don't think that the full package is worth it for their team. But also maybe people are taking into account the whole um, the whole controversy that surrounds uh, that surrounds this clip. So stream clip from when he was 16, stupid racial remarks out of rage, etc. Um, I've grown a lot as a person, now turning 21, I wasn't mature enough to stand racism of any kind, even as a joke is simply unacceptable. I know I've previously addressed this situation, I feel the need to address it again as how it's affected my livelihood and job. If CDL organisations truly believe me to be a PRS, then sign me on the bench and give me a trial period, media restrictions are more than open to that. I simply want to be able to compete at the highest level because I'm now more than capable of doing so. Um, for the CDL organisations that are interested in me but turn me down last 
last second. Please take what I said into consideration and just give it a thought. Thank you. If everything goes south and I don't get a spot that isn't going to stop me, I'll be competing in Path to Pro Series. I'm just going to put my head down and grind. Um, and, you know, um, as I say, I'm all for second chances. I think maybe some organizations are trying to... There's controversy involved in picking up Ferro, right? If you pick up Ferro even on the bench, immediately people on Reddit and Twitter are going to be like... like what exactly are you doing that? So I kind of feel like he's been made an example of in that sense by some of the organizations. But as I said, I don't want to get in too deep on it. We have more stuff to discuss. Let's have a look then at this rumor coming out of Crone Intel Call of Duty related to the Toronto spot. We've heard a lot of names related to Toronto over the last several weeks. And these are the 10 players supposedly that are going to be on Toronto. Now, um, you, know, you know, they're doing a Paris, right? Supposedly, they uh, if they are going to announce their full 10 man roster as it seems right here on the 24th of October as we just looked at then they probably won't be announcing who their starting five are going to be that's going to be based on well when the game comes out and how they feel like themselves are fitting into a team this is a huge amount of money to invest though let's just go through these players we've got Brack we've got Methods Looney Lucky Metals Kleenex Classic Bantz Cami and Mayhem 10-man roster. Now, this is quite remarkable, and this isn't really something we've seen from other organizations, right? They've gone for a starting five plus two substitutes, and a lot of the substitutes haven't even been announced yet. We might not know for a long time. Toronto, Paris, they've gone for a stack our roster with a lot of players, and we can figure things out and make a great team, and also have the possibility, depending how the rules work this season, on subbing players in mid-series, right? We've heard the possibility that maybe going into a search and destroy or whatever, you might be able to sub in some of your players from the bench and switch up your team for like a search and destroy uh, powerhouse squad, for example, right? Um, there isn't really any particular S&D stars on this team, um, to be honest, but, you know, a guy like Mayhem, for example, was phenomenal this year in control, but wasn't so good in the other game mode. So, for example, if he this year, for whatever reason, is spectacular in CTF or something like that, um, then maybe you just sub him in for the CTF. Now, who knows whether once you sub a player in, you're allowed to sub them back out immediately. That'd be a little bit strange. We'll have to see how the rules go in coming months, but it seems like Toronto are preparing for that. As I said, though, this is a lot of money. Minimum, you've got to pay 50 grand a year to have a player on your bench or on your roster at all. So the fact that they're going for 10 players means that other organizations that are going for seven, they're saving a bit of money in comparison. However, they may not be saving money if you think of the salaries that they might be playing their starting roster. You know, these guys, for example, let's say they're paying them all a flat wage of like 70k or so, whatever. On another team, you might have a couple of big superstars getting paid like 250k a year, and then the guys on the bench are still getting paid 50k. So on the whole, maybe Toronto is actually paying less than some of the organizations. That would kind of make sense as well, given the caliber of these players, right? It's not incredibly top tier players, but to some degree, potentially underrated and useful players that can fit into roles. And I kind of like the idea of having so many options to play with. Looney, I imagine, is going to be on your starting roster. He's kind of that in-game leadership type figure you'd want to have. Then I'm guessing they're going to put Methods in as well on the start, just because of how good he was in World War II. And um, yeah, he played with Looney right on that Rise Nation team that did so well in that game. And then the, there's a the whole thing about Looney scapegoating methods and all of that stuff. How do you fill out the rest of your squad then? Very interesting. A lot of players you could potentially put on here. Probably we'll cover that in coming days. Obviously, we're expecting the announcement in like 10 days time. So I didn't want to go too much in depth here because we want to go on to the Clayster announcement. But this is the rumor at the current time. Um, and yeah, just just this before the Clayster announcement came out. He said, does anyone know how to mark a call as spam? And a uh, call comes in, of course, from Hastro. And then here we go with the announcement then. Cod Dallas, at this point in career, in my career, that's what I play for, Legacy. Let's roll the clip. It's a really good announcement video. I've been doing this a long time. 10 years and 14 championships later, I'm back at the top. Last year was a prove-it year for me. Not only to prove it to myself that I could still win, but to prove to all the fans that I'm still a champion. To win playoffs and champs back-to-back -to, -back to close out last year, it not only meant a lot to me, but it meant a lot for my legacy. At this point in my career, that's what I play for. Legacy. I chose this team to continue building on the foundation that I laid last year. The foundation for success. Success is an all-in thing. You have to be motivated, you have to be hungry, you have to be talented, 
and you have to do it all together. Teaming with young, talented individuals, everybody has to buy in, everybody has to do their part. I'm hungry to not only cement my own legacy, but to help others build theirs. I'm really excited to represent the great state of Texas and play for Dallas Call of Duty. So yeah, Clayster confirmed onto this Dallas team. We pretty much all knew it was happening, but a uh, fantastic video, to be honest, in my opinion, for introducing him to the team. That's, as I said, probably one of the most exciting parts about this time, when we kind of know that the team's going to be Clayster, Hook, Illy, Shotzi, and Crimsix, at least rumoured, um, but we don't know exactly what announcements they're going to do. And you could kind of take quite a lot from the video as well, given that he was talking a fair bit about um, how he's come from United. He wants to set up kind of a similar type team with the young guns that, as he talks about, so so, so yeah, I mean, Hook, Illy, Shotzi fit the bill on that one. So he mentions things along these lines. It definitely makes sense in terms of a squad. And of course, his former teammates, Simp and, and Abizi, those guys are rumored to be going on to the Atlanta team. So that could be a fantastic rivalry, right? Like so many teams are being switched up right now that the rivalries are going to be hella spicy going into the next season. And it's really great to look forward to. Thanks as well to Mike for um, pointing this out to me. I did notice this in the video as well. I wonder if you guys caught it. It was a nice little catch. This, um, so, well, I was gonna make th something about it, but I saw Mike uh, mention me in this tweet, so it was much easier to use his screenshots. If you notice in this video, if this will go, uh, if this clip will load real quick, here we go. So in the background, Clayster's under this bridge, whatever this bridge happens to be, and uh, this bridge looks very recognizable. If any of you guys saw Crimsix's post from Dallas, Texas a few days ago, and he said Texas forever, um, however long ago this was, with, of course, the same bridge. So it does seem like uh, Dallas has been doing some of their marketing stunts or whatever underneath this particular bridge in Dallas, Texas, and the fact that Clayster was under it, and then also we have Crimsix, um, putting this out on Instagram. I don't know if I said tweeted, uh, got that wrong anyway. Um, yeah, so definitely implies there's something going on here. Of course, we kind of know this is going to happen, but I always, I always like little uh, hint drops like this, right? Whatever they're related to. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll uh, more than likely see you guys tomorrow, depending on what happens. Maybe we'll go into the Toronto roster in more detail. And of course, we'll have another announcement as to what the next player will be on this squad. So yeah, thanks for watching as always. I'll see you next time.